welcome back to Hilltop Stovetop, the show where we teach you how to make great meals in an ordinary kitchen. Today, we're going back into the dessert realm, and uh, we're making something at the request of my niece Gwen and her friends out in Alberta, who um, uh, are all homeschooling their kids. So we wanted a dessert that the kids could help make and maybe learn a little something along the way. So uh, today, apple crisp, we've got two ways to make it. Uh, first off is a very simple way to make a dessert. And this is one of these things, if you have frozen fruit in your freezer and you've got a box of ginger snaps in your cupboard, you can make a fast, easy dessert if you've got unexpected company uh, or you just feel like you, you need a little uh, uh, nice warm dessert in an evening. Very fast, very easy. The second way that we're gonna do it is the tr more traditional apple crisp with an oatmeal topping. Um, there's some that go with more of a, a flour-based kind of topping, but I'm used to the, the oatmeal topping, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, first off, we've got our apples today. We have Cortland apples from McLaren Orchards, which is in Burnstown, just about, oh, maybe a 40-minute drive from here. Um, these are Cortland apples, which come in a variety of sizes, as you can tell, the small to the, to the large. Cortlands are one of the later apples in the season, and they're a very um, um, crisp and tart kind of an apple, which is very good for, um, for pies. And speaking of pies, if you think that I'm going to eat a bushel of apples this week, well, that's not going to happen. But what I do with this bushel of apples is I'm going to prepare them all just like I'm preparing them for this apple crisp today. And I'm going to freeze them in packages of four cups of prepared apples along with half a cup of brown sugar, a tablespoon of cinnamon, and a tablespoon of minnet tapioca. And the minnet tapioca acts as the, uh, the thickening agent, and with a four cup batch of apples already prepared, that's exactly the right amount to make a, a pie or an apple crisp like what we're doing today, or some other kind of apple dessert. And if you've got it all ready to go in your freezer, at a moment's notice in the dead of winter, you can have a nice, fresh tasting dessert. So let's move in a little closer and see how I go about preparing that. Okay, so what I find works best when I'm preparing this many apples all at once is a little bit of an assembly line process. Um, I've got several things here. I've got this big bowl of water, and this is cold water, and what I've added to the water is some lemon juice. And I probably put about a quarter of a cup of lemon juice in here. And what that does is, as I cut the apples, I'm gonna put them in the bowl, and that is going to stop the oxidization process. So for you homeschool kids, the oxidization process, that's what causes the fruit to turn brown, it's what causes metal to rust. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that come into that category. So you can add that into your science lesson. But adding the lemon juice, or uh, you can buy powdered ascorbic acid, something like that into the water stops that browning process. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna bother uh, even washing these apples. I know where they came from. I know that uh, you know they're, they're pretty clean to start with, but I'm also gonna be peeling these apples because they're of the type of fruit that they're a dessert that they're going into. I am gonna peel them. If you choose not to peel your apples, and that's quite all right, do make sure that you wash them well. And times when you might not uh, peel them, say if I was gonna take this and make a whole baked apple, which is an option, I could take this, stuff it, take the core out, uh, stuff it full of caramels and wrap it in pastry and cook it whole as a dessert. Uh, in that case, I would make sure that they were well washed. So I'm gonna start off, I could take a knife and cut these into wedges and core each one, but it's much easier if you have uh, an apple slicer like this. This particular one is another uh, Pampered Chef product, 
and it's it's quite good. It's a very sharp um, cutter. Uh, I've had this for several years, and it's still going strong. Um, it does come with a cover, so when I put it away in the drawer, I'm um, I'm not slicing into other things or dulling the blades. But the other thing about this is it is solid metal. And uh, you can get cheaper ones that are um, uh, plastic handles, but sometimes when you're pressing down really hard on a whole lot of apples, those handles will break and you're kind of stuck in the middle. So I'm going to start by taking a whole bunch of apples, just working on getting the core out of them. Just like that. And then I'm going to pop those right into that water. And I'm just going to keep going until I've got what I think is about four cups, which is enough for one batch. And then I'll do the next part of this. And uh, so I end up with a, a cylinder in the middle, which has got most of the, um, the seeds and stuff in it. So there's very little... Um, coring that I have to do and all I'll need to do is to to take the skin off of these sometimes you kind of have to fight with it when it comes at an angle there we go and I always end up with one little bit left over there um, I think it's about well it depends on the size of apples that you're using it can be about six inches or so one thing to watch when you're using this is make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way because when it lets go on its way down, you can hear it click, and you don't want your fingers underneath those blades. I don't know. I'm going to keep dunking those into that um, lemon water just to make sure that their surfaces are covered. And what we'll do here is we've started... The cores are off to the side. They don't have that lemon water. So by the time I'm finished with this, you'll see the difference in the color of the apples versus the color of the core. And uh, that will give you an idea of how that oxidization process is, is working and how the lemon juice is stopping it. Okay. So that's probably enough for our four cups. So what I do now is I just take these out a few at a time, peel them and put them back into the lemon water. I don't want to do too much at once because if I leave it sitting here too long, these apples will start to absorb that water and get a little um, a bit on the uh, soggy side. So uh, we're going to do this one batch at a time really quickly. Okay, so there uh, we've peeled that first batch. Oh, well, there's always one that, that hides. And um, so now we're ready to cut them up into pieces and just so we're, we're keeping on track. So these are the ones that they've been in this uh, water with lemon juice. And this is the core that came out of that. So just in the matter of five, 10 minutes, uh, that's how much it's changed in color. So you, this isn't nearly as appetizing in your pie as a nice white apple like that. So then we take our measuring cup and we're gonna slice it up till we get about four cups. It doesn't have to be an exact measurement. I'm sure nobody's gonna complain if they get an extra bite of apple along the way. Okay, so see how quick we can do this. Okay, we've got about eight cups of apples chopped up uh, anywhere from a centimeter to two centimeters uh, in chunks. Um, eight cups of apples, two cups, no, sorry, one cup of um, brown sugar, two tablespoons of cinnamon, and two tablespoons of minute tapioca. Minute tapioca is this stuff. People think about it in terms of making that uh, pudding that only some people like. But it's excellent for thickening fruit pies. Just a tablespoon in a pie will be, will be enough to uh, keep all the juices together. And it, when it's cooked, it's clear. Uh, and some thickening agents aren't necessarily uh, that kind of... They don't come out clear. They have a little cloudiness to them. So I'm going to split this, these apples between two dishes, 
And then we'll get to making our toppings for the crisp. I did grease these pans before I put the, the apples in there because it will get kind of ooey gooey, uh, which is good, but um, we don't want to make a mess that's hard to clean up afterwards. All right, so we've got two kinds. Uh, one will be a traditional sort of apple crisp. I've got just a little over, about a cup and a quarter of just regular rolled oats. Um, nothing fancy about it. Some recipes you'll see will get fancier. I even saw one recipe where they used oatmeal cookie mix. And I'm gonna add maybe, maybe a quarter of a cup of brown sugar to that. And I'm just gonna grab a fork here. And the key with apple crisp is the stuff that's the crispy part, which is in this case the oatmeal. And the other part is a little bit of butter uh, which we have melted ahead of time. So here I've got a cup of butter and I'm gonna use about half of it. Half of it in this one. And it just moistens that a little bit and the butter will also help with the browning of this. So there you go. So we've ended up with something just a a little bit of moist oatmeal is what it is. And we're just gonna sprinkle that on top. And the apples will kind of peek out around this. But a little bit of cinnamon to this if you wanted. And I think just that hint of sugar. It doesn't need very much because there's sugar in the apples already. Okay, so there's apple crisp number one. Now, apple crisp number two. Switch over here. And for this one, we want to have our food processor. You could do this um, uh, with a rolling pin and a bag. Um, I've even seen it done where they take the, the cookies, put it in a clean tea towel, and whack that against the countertop. But since I've got a food processor, I'll use that. So these are just ordinary ginger snaps. And I'm going to use about two-thirds of this package. And this is the kind of thing that if you have a package of these in your uh, cupboard and a package of fruit in your freezer, you're good to go. And that, uh, it can be any kind, of, these crisps can be made with any kind of, um, of fruit that you want. They come out very well with blueberries and things too. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna make a little noise. Okay, so there we got a nice fine crumb, uh, as if we were gonna make a pie crust out of that. And then we're gonna take the other half a cup of, um, of uh, what is this? This is butter. We're gonna take the other half a cup of butter and put that in the top too. And there we have it, we have a beautiful topping. Use this fork. So there you go, they got nice moisture. Um, we could get away with adding the extra row of ginger snaps, but I think this, this will be enough to cover it. And this one, because it's got that really snappy ginger flavor, it just kicks this crisp up a notch. There, 
So there we go. We've got two apple crisps ready to go. And mm, that's so good. Um, I'm going to pop them in the oven at 350 degrees for about half an hour. So in other words, if you had this ready to go and you popped it in the oven when you sat down to dinner, it would be ready and piping hot for dessert. And of course, you want to have a little bit of ice cream at the ready to, uh, to spoon this over. So we'll take a pause while this goes into the oven and we'll see you when it's done. All right, so here we go. Magically, 30 minutes later, and our two types of apple crisp are out of the oven. We have our traditional apple crisp with oatmeal, a little bit of brown sugar and butter, and the snazzier one with, uh, made with ginger snaps and butter as well. Uh, both of them have that crispy topping and bubbly apples down below, and we've got our uh, ice cream here just ready to to melt along with that. The apples themselves are still, uh, like if, if this was to cool for another five minutes or so, the liquid in the bottom of the, the apples would start to um, be less runny. But right now it is perfect for over the top of that ice cream. So there you go. We hope you enjoyed today's episode about apple crisp. Uh, in two different ways and uh, that you will like and subscribe and a special shout out to all the homeschool parents uh, that would just love to make this with their kids and I look forward to seeing you the next time and particularly for those subscribers so you don't want to miss an episode you never know what's going to come next bye bye for now <laughs>